proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood, this is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another performance of your War Department program, Proudly We Hail. Through the cooperation of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present Miss Virginia Gray as the star of our show, Heading for a Wedding, written by Tom Petty with music by Eddie Skrivanik. This is Lillian Rowland's big chance. She's a nightclub singer, and Eric Saunders, the Broadway producer, is thinking of putting her in his new show. Hey, what is this, a frame-up? I thought I'd been invited to a party. Well, the others will be along later. You're not frightened, are you? <laughs> of you and your little three-room penthouse? What do you think? I think you're lovely. Yeah, and I can sing, too. And for your information, I'm not the least bit frightened. And why worry about the other people? Maybe it's just because I like parties. And maybe the others aren't here because I like singers. Alone. Uh, now that you've got the double talk off your chest, let's get down to cases. What's on your mind, mister? Suppose we call it business. Uh-huh, yeah. Well, there's legitimate business, unfinished business, funny business. What's yours? I'm looking for a singer. To sing? Why not? Lil, there's a spot for you in my new show, and you'll be doing me a big favor if you accept it. To step up from the nightclubs, along with any strings attached. No strings, Lil. And maybe a few privileges. Such as such uh, as having you near me, seeing you every day. Oh, I'm head over heels in love with you, darling. That could be quite a string. On the other hand, you could be just stringing me along. Mm -mm. I'm on the level, Lil. I wonder. Anyhow, Eric, it's the most attractive proposition I've had since I left Crestview. Now you can drop the tough role. You aren't fooling me a bit, dear. It isn't a role, Eric. It's a way of surviving on Broadway. I want to get ahead. Then you'll accept the role? Maybe I'll accept both roles, Eric. I knew you were a smart girl the first time I saw you in a spotlight. Come here, little darling. Uh-uh, not so fast, Eric. I said maybe. Don't you think it's about time to quit playing hard to get? I'm not playing, Eric. Oh, you've been wonderful, and I'm the luckiest girl in town. It's, it's just that I've got to be sure that I'm catching the right train. You mean there's another man, I suppose? That's the trouble. There used to be one back in Crestview and back there. Crestview? Oh, there's nothing for you in that little town. Maybe you're right. There are no musical openings this season, and there isn't a penthouse in 500 miles of Crestview. I'm pretty sure I belong right here, but, well, I'm not dead sure. That's why I've got to go back. Sounds silly, doesn't You'd it? You'd get fed up with Crestview in 24 hours. <laughs> Maybe I won't have to stay that long. Well, in that case, I'll go along with you, just for laughs. Do you think that would be fair to Crestview? Who wants to be fair? I'm going along to protect my interests. So it's all decided. Oh, well, maybe we've got something there, big boy. I'd like to see how Mr. Eric Sanders measures up to Crestview. Well, I'd like to see our Lil back among the natives. Maybe we'll both have fun. Huh? Could be. Okay, we'll leave tomorrow morning. Hmm. That must be the other guests. So you really are giving a party? Of course, a hop, a party to announce the discovery of a new singer for my show. <sighs> you were quite sure of me, weren't you? find it pays to be confident. Come on, baby, put on your best smile. I want you to meet some of my friends. Say, you really picked a whistle stop to grow up in, baby. Oh, silly, this is just a station. The town's six miles away over the hills. Oh, it's a lovely town, Eric. I've wired Will to meet us. Well, we're here, but I don't see him around. I'm beginning to believe your William Peck is a figment of the imagination, along with Crestview. Oh, you're wrong, Eric. They're both very real. And no doubt very rural. All I know about your bucolic boyfriend is his name. You might call Will a Virginia farmer and stock raiser. He doesn't know much about you, so you're starting even. Even? <laughs> I never start even, and this time I'm way out ahead of your tank town pal. Or I haven't learned a thing in ten years on Broadway. Hey, hey, there's a lad giving you the eye. Hello, honey. Oh, it's Will. Hello, darling. Oh, welcome home, sweetheart. I'm uh, sorry to be late. Oh, I think nothing of it. You look good to me any time. <laughs> oh, Will, this is Eric Sanders. Oh, I'm glad to see you, Sanders. Oh, yes. Lil wrote me about you. Here, I'll help with the bags. I can't say that you fit my idea of a farmer, Peck. <laughs> no overalls, no mud on your shoes, no tea <laughs> straws in your hair. I'm afraid you've disappointed, Eric, Will. You see, he was he was expecting Mortimer Snoop. Oh, well, I'll try to make up for it. Oh, I thought we never would get you home, darling. <laughs> You're not going to have her long. 
Bill's sort of grown used to electric lights and running water. <laughs> well, I must say, Sanders, that you have a very quaint idea of country life. Now, if you look over to the left there, you'll see the lights coming on in the village. And guess what? They are electric lights. Sorry, Eric, he's right. You'll have to rough it some other time. My, uh, say, this is pretty country. Mm-hmm. Hey, what a beautiful house over there on the hill. Huh. It might be Mount Vernon itself. Well, that's Broad Acres. I'm glad you like it. Broad Acres isn't as old as Mount Vernon, but it's home. And, Eric, dear, the house has nine baths. <laughs> Our story starring Virginia Gray will continue in just a moment. But first, here's an important message from the Honorable Ralph F. Gates, Governor of the State of Indiana. The American people have brought to a victorious conclusion the most desperate and far-reaching conflict in our nation's history. The task ahead now is the maintenance of world harmony, the building of a new and better world of peace and international goodwill and cooperation. The regular army of the United States now offers our young men the opportunity to take action of the highest patriotic significance, to serve in the Army when we must maintain our national security. This call is addressed to every young man between the ages of 17 and 34 inclusive, those still in service, those who have recently left the service, and those young men who soon will be eligible for service. I earnestly urge wholehearted cooperation in this movement to recruit a protective force composed of men who wish not only to preserve the freedoms for which so many died, but also to defend their country for all times from the necessity of future Americans being required to make like sacrifices. For detailed information regarding enlistment in the new regular army, visit your nearest army recruiting station. It's morning, and Eric's ideas about a Virginia farm life are changing rapidly. Lillian, Eric, and Will are visiting the stables at Broad Acres. Are you still playing polo, Will? Well, occasionally, honey, but I'm more interested in our hunt club. Oh. Say, would you like to ride to the hounds this afternoon? Oh, I'd love it. Oh, I forgot to ask. Do you ride, Eric? The nearest I've ever been to a horse was last winter when the Rodeo played Madison Square Garden. <laughs> well, that's too bad. Well, we'll do something else then. Anyhow, here's your chance to get acquainted with some pretty fair horses. Look, Will, the Bay Mayor. Huh? I believe she remembers me. Well, of course she does. None uh, at Broadacres will ever forget you, honey. Do you uh, use these animals for plowing? Is he kidding, Lil, or should I hit him now? <laughs> oh, Eric, don't be silly. The fellow you're looking at's won a dozen ribbons. Probably cost $5,000. Ah, you're still a good judge of thoroughbreds, Lil. Oh, I ought to be. Your mother trained me. She taught me a lot about horses and men. Say, if Eric doesn't care for riding, how about a little shooting? You know, there are a lot of pheasant and quail around Broad Acres, and my bird dogs are just dying for a workout. Wonderful. Oh, remember the day we went duck hunting, Will, and I bagged two more than you? <laughs> <laughs> I was so cold, my feet didn't get warm for weeks. Uh, uh, why don't you two go ahead? I, I'd just be in the way anyhow. Eric. Don't tell me you've never been hunting. I never fired a gun in my life. Oh, you poor fellow. I guess you're just not the country sportsman type. I might as well admit it. I'm in over my head here. I grew up in Brooklyn. Sold papers, dodged taxi cabs, picked up a smattering of schooling, and went to work for a theatrical agency. <laughs> I never fully realized people live like you do, Peck. Well, it has its advantages, Eric. But, you know, sometimes I wish I could have grown up as you did. I, I've had things too easy all my life. Mm, don't worry, Eric. You fit Broad Acres better than Will would fit the show business. Oh, how true that is. <laughs> we'll find something we can all do together. Uh, we will, baby. If you'll pick me out a gentle horse, Will, I'd like to begin the education of Eric Saunders. Well, good. And if I'm able to walk later in the day, I'd like a shot at a couple of your fattest pheasants. <laughs> I told you he had the stuff, Will. Eric, you're a man after my own heart. <laughs> Will wander off to. Why, oh, I think he had an idea you might like to rest. You really look like you've been through the ringer, Eric. Oh, I have. Across the washboard, too. <laughs> the groom said that horse was gated. Yeah, corrugated. Do you still want to be a country gentleman? I'm not sure, Lil. That horse was bad enough, but that gun kicked like a pile driver. <laughs> I'm black and blue all over. I feel like I'd been hit by a Lenox Avenue Express. <laughs> Blame it on Lil. I had to find out something about you. Uh, go ahead, have your laugh. The uh, guy can be wrong, can't he? 
I thought you were the one who came along for the laughs. And I thought you came here to find out something about yourself. Maybe I did. But I'm awfully glad you came along. It gave us a chance to get acquainted. Oh, I know we've been running around together for several months in New York, but I wanted to peek behind the curtain. Oh, baby, you've had it. I suppose you'll be telling me to run along any minute now. Why didn't you tell me you were building your play on a shoestring, that you couldn't afford a name singer, so you thought of me? How did you find out I tried to get a name for the show? Mm, I'm no babe in the woods. I get around. I'm beginning to realize it. Anyhow, the other offer wasn't second choice. Does it still stand? Do you still want me, Eric? Of course, but... <laughs> I'm not foolish enough to hope that it means anything to you. Lil, that fellow Peck could match my pennies with $20 bills. Aren't you attaching a lot of importance to money? He's a gentleman, too. So are you, Eric. A very real one. You could live like a real lady here. Heavens forbid. But you are a lady. I'm not. Oh, not in the sense you mean. My father was one of the caretakers here at Broad Acres. Well, I could marry Will any time I wanted to, but, well, he's got everything he needs. <laughs> Certainly got more than his share, and I thought he had you, too. Look, Eric, I learned something last night, and today. Nothing around here counts. Being in love is finding somebody that needs you. Will doesn't need me, but, brother, you do. And I never needed you more than right this minute. Just a minute, lover. There's got to be a wedding in this deal. Now, the sooner the better, darling. Wonderful. We'll be married right here. Uh, at Broad Acres? <laughs> what will think? It was his idea, honey. That's why I brought you here. This is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our proudly we hailed story. Before leaving you, I am pleased to present Major General Fred L. Anderson, Assistant Chief of Air Staff for Personnel, Army Air Forces. General Anderson. Teamwork, teamwork, and more teamwork has always been the aim in the Army Air Forces. In November of last year, General H. H. Arnold, our former commanding general, made this statement in his third and final report to the Secretary of War, Robert P. Patterson. We have always stressed the idea of the air crew as a team. It goes further than that. The Army Air Force's share in our victory can be attributed to the teamwork of all its individuals. Its officers, enlisted men, and enlisted women shared equally in making victory possible. The coordinated efforts of air crews, ground crews, and civilians on the production front, General Arnold concluded, brought smooth cooperation in reaching our objectives. We intend to keep this spirit and teamwork a, a permanent part of the Air Forces. Upon it rests the continued success of our air arm. There isn't a pilot who won't admit that he and his airplane are only as good as his crew chief. The enlisted men of the Air Forces are a highly trained group of specialists who have always taken a great deal of pride in their airplane and the pilots who flew them and in their fellow crewmen. In this post-war era, we have set up many schools and opportunities for men to learn skilled trades, making it possible for them to take their places as full-fledged members of the team. We have a serious responsibility in the Air Forces today. It is up to us to maintain the security of the nation by keeping the United States at the top as the leading air power in the world. How successful we are depends not on any one type of Air Force specialist, but on every one of us. We are a team. Thank you, General Anderson. Our thanks also to Miss Virginia Gray for appearing on this program. Proudly We Hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in.